Huge Disney Lucasfilm Star Wars sequel trilogy leaks. These leaks are on the subreddit Star Wars Speculation. While I cannot confirm any of these leaks, and we must consider this as rumor, leaks that have appeared here in Star Wars Speculation in the past have been indeed true. So take this as you'd like. Again, I cannot confirm that any of this is real. It's just very interesting. Posted one day ago. What happened with the Disney sequel trilogy and the changes to Episode 9? I worked on the sequel trilogy for its entire run, from The Force Awakens to The Last Jedi and The Rise of Skywalker. The world has changed and has my position in the roots of this tree. In the next coming days, weeks, months, there will be several leaks due to the shakeups at Lucasfilm. Leaks have become a part of the culture of the company. I wanted to set some matters straight before that occurred. Who am I? Does it matter? There's nothing I could prove to convince everyone who I was without doxing myself. Something I'm not particular open to doing. Take this as gospel or with a grain of salt. Regarding Lucasfilm, there has never been a cultural civil war at Lucasfilm. Nevertheless, a disagreement on what direction to take the franchise has always been a recurring problem. Certain members of the Lucasfilm story group, Pablo, desired to see Star Wars resemble a D&D &D campaign, more aesthetic, less narrative. Others, Fabro and Filoni, are pushing, pushed, for a more traditional approach. There isn't some war between Kathy and Fabro. They are on rather pleasant terms. Kathy seems to want him to take over once she retires, is promoted. Favreau may or may not take the position. Filoni isn't interested, nor is he remotely qualified to run a film studio. He's much happier working on his own stories. Regarding the sequel trilogy, each sequel trilogy director prioritized their scripts differently. Johnson was intoxicated with the themes. Trevorrow had been infatuated with the spectacle, and Abrams favored the concepts. As to be expected, this led to very different approaches to the sequels. Some Lucasfilm fancied, others not as much. Ray being the biggest disagreement. Abrams initially had hoped to work with George. That didn't work out. When George walked, JJ had almost attempted the same. Iger stopped him. Lucasfilm saw the sequels as the departure from the old way into a new era. Initially, they had fuddled around with Ray being the granddaughter of Obi-Wan before settling on no one. Abrams wanted Ray to be the granddaughter of Anakin, eventually pushing for her to be Luke's daughter he had with a fellow rebel after the war. The backstory of how Rey was left on Jakku changed several times. Luke left her with Lor Santeca, who had once been a Force user as well, in one draft. Another draft, Kylo left her there as an act of compassion. The concept made it into the final draft of Duel of the Fates and the first draft of The Rise of Skywalker. Abrams had seen Kylo as a tragic villain and wanted to tell a dark what-if story to the redemption of Vader. Ben Solo would have always been redeemed, but only through death. Finn had likewise been a subject of controversy. Abrams wanted John Boyega to play Finn. Alan Horn, as well as additional Disney producers, saw that as a further risk, Horn pushing for an Ansel Elgort type. Finn being a Jedi was also something Disney producers thought was too much if John Boyega was cast. Abrams was forced to water down that subplot in TFA. Horn was the most vocal against a romance between Finn and Rey, risk factor playing a big part. Abrams would eventually ask to set up a romance between Poe and Finn when Disney requested him to not go forward with Finn and Rey, which had been refused as well. Lucasfilm asked Abrams to set up a romance between Poe and Rey. Abrams refused. To sum it up, Abrams was not on the same page with TPTB. Ryan was far more helpful with Lucasfilm, working with them instead of against them. Frankly, this turned out to be a mistake for Ryan due to Lucasfilm being indecisive, obviously. Stories were always being changed. Abrams had pushed for a more traditional ending to the trilogy. Luke Skywalker living past the end of the sequels, instructing a new generation and his offspring. Lucasfilm wanted Star Wars to move past the Skywalkers, pushing for them to be retired. Ryan was less concerned with the beginning or ending, rather what he could do with his chapter. Lucasfilm gave him creative control, just as long as he took their notes. Ryan's film had gone under reshoots as well. Some changes, examples, Crate being moved to the ending, Holdo going from a senator to rebel, less romantic undertones between Rey and Kylo. Colin, unfortunately, was left to pick up the remains of the comprised Abrams chapter and Ryan's self-contained chapter. After many rewrites of the Duel of the Fates script, Colin and Lucasfilm parted ways. Jack Thorne wrote an additional draft to Nine. It was deemed unusable as well. There was only one ending where Kylo lived. It was pitched after Colin's departure and before Abrams returned. The script went nowhere. 
Enter the Return of Abrams, as well as the same conflicts from 2014-2015. Abrams had pitched a two-part film, part one to cover the aftermath of TLJ and establish his narrative, part two as a closure. Disney said no, clearly. The Rise of Skywalker was a mess of different rewrites. The plot details for Tross provided to Jedi Paxis was not the original story of the film, rather just one of the many rewrites that script had undergone. The earliest completed script for Nine under Abrams and Terrio had ended up a hybrid of The Rise of Skywalker and Duel of the Fates. One of the working titles for the script had been named Heirs to the Force. Rose had a key role in saving the day by altering a communication jammer the First Order used to keep the galaxy in the dark. This message spread across the galaxy would have been Leia's call for help from TLJ. Rey had learned she was Vader's granddaughter and reconciled her past with Luke. Finn had staged a Stormtrooper rebellion after fighting a long-lost sibling. Poe was made the leader of the Resistance while Hux would have been made the Grand Marshal of the First Order as Kylo's right-hand man. Kylo would have sought to reform the galaxy, but found peace in the end and passed on. The story was scrapped before, during, principal photography. Some stayed in, some was changed during film. Disney and Lucasfilm disagreed with Abrams' finale, felt that it needed a villain with a bigger audience presence than Kylo or Hux, expressing regret that Snoke had been killed off, but not wanting to bring him back. Abrams had faith that Adam Driver and Domhnall Gleeson would be more than enough and that both men would turn in a grand performance. Disney did not want to hear it. They pushed Palpatine onto Kathy, who was forced to push him onto Abrams. Abrams played ball with Palpatine, yet every week on production there were new notes from Disney or Lucasfilm. Eventually, Abrams shot two movies, His Vision and Disney Lucasfilms. I'll give you a guess on which one got a theatrical release. It wasn't the one with Matt Smith. The cast was disappointed in the end, Boyega and Driver feeling the most robbed due to the story changes. They had been excited to film scenes together for the first time since The Force Awakens. I feel for Kelly Marie Tran and Naomi Aki. It's hard enough for women of color in the industry. Getting their scenes cut wasn't something Abrams or Kathy wanted. Streaming our favorite shows, keeping in touch with our loved ones, and even our banking is mostly done online these days. We'd like to think our information is safe, but as our online footprint increases, so does our need for proper security. Surfshark adds an extra layer of security when you're online to keep all of your passwords, photos, and videos safe. There's a lot of websites and hackers that take your info without you even knowing it, but you can swim under their radar using Surfshark VPN, a virtual private network. Surfshark is a VPN service that protects your information by encrypting all of the data that you send through the internet. You can stop websites from tracking your info and selling targeted ads to you. With the click of a button, you can forget about data mining and intrusive advertisements. One of my favorite features of Surfshark is that you can see content not available in your area. Disney Plus or Netflix, for example, have different movies for each country. Access should not be tied to a region. In China, YouTube and most social media websites are banned. With Surfshark, you can solve the problem by simply changing your location. Just connect to the service and refresh the page. Surfshark is an app and browser extension that enables you to place your laptop or phone anywhere in the world and allows you to access the internet as if you were in that country. You can watch any content anywhere in the world on any of your devices. Surfshark turns you into an anonymous and hard to trace online user and makes the internet a safer and more enjoyable place for you. I use Surfshark every day. It automatically starts up whenever I start my PC and whenever I need it, I activate it with just one click. Surfshark is the only VPN to offer one account to use on an unlimited number of devices. If you want both protection and freedom online, use my code NMSW, short for Not My Star Wars, to get 83% off plus three extra months for free. Surfshark offers a 30 day money back guarantee, so there's no risk to try it out for yourself. The link is in the description below. Some closing comments Is there a JJ cut? Still perplexed on why everyone's calling it a JJ cut. Calling it Abrams' cut seems more traditional. The answer is yes and no. There is an assembly cut of what Abrams filmed before reshoots took place. It resembles his original vision. It needs some work and likely some reshoots. Only a lunatic would attempt to fund it though. Is there a Lucas cut? No. Abrams had gone to Lucas, like he had gone to all the other directors, and got their input on Nine. That's it. Lucas did not ghost direct Nine. He gave his input on the initial script Abrams and Terrier worked on. Difference between the theatrical and Abrams cut of The Rise of Skywalker. 
Matt Smith, for one. The runtime would be close to four hours. Palpatine's role constantly changed, from dark spirit to possession to eventually rescued zombie clone. Original role was just a cameo for the fans as it was in Duel of the Fates. Ray's parents had been Luke and a Force archaeologist who found Anakin's lightsaber after the events of the OT, but before the ST. We never learned her name in the story. Kylo and Ray's relationship was more tragic. Ray wanting to put him out of his misery and Kylo wanting to be free. There was a scene of Kylo saying goodbye to Leia, giving closure to mother and son. Jaina had been Finn's sister. I'm told this is still on the table for future stories. They were separated when they were kidnapped. Their last names were once Galfridian. Much of Rose's subplot was dedicated to figuring out how to outsmart the First Order. Rose and Jaina had a third act subplot of converting the Jammer into the Beacon to alert the galaxy for the final battle. They became close. Pride originally sold out the First Order to the Resistance. The oldest of the Old Guard tired of following children. Hux and Kylo work together to find out who the spy is by leaking false information. Hux kills Pride. Coruscant was a key world for conflict between the First Order and Resistance. Several flashbacks to Luke's life before the sequels. Luke had been looking for Mortis through Acto. Luke and Kylo would have a proper duel on Mortis. The scene was based off their confrontation in Duel of the Fates. There were hints to Poe's romantic interest in Finn, yet in the end, he gives his blessings to Finn and Rey. Poe would end up convincing bounty hunter Zori to aid the fight with her fellow bounty hunters. The two became mutually interested in the other. Final battle for the Resistance takes place over a giant docking bay with the First Order fleet on Coruscant. Finn leads the assault to the beacon that will call the cavalry with Rose and Jaina. He would have been wielding a green lightsaber. Unknown if it was Luke's lightsaber or an Abrams Deuce Ex Machina. The message to the galaxy is Leia's call to help from the last Jedi that BB-8 recorded. Sith troopers are actually clones mixed with Phasma's DNA. Finn leads a stormtrooper rebellion of normal stormtroopers versus Sith stormtroopers. Rey offers Kylo her hand for redemption, a parallel contrast to his offering in TLJ. Kylo rejects it. He thanks her for caring. Rey and Kylo have their final battle. Knights of Ren would help. Finn arrives to fight them and Kylo with Rey. Knights of Ren would be killed. Kylo accepts his defeat and returns to the light as he dies. Ben would have appeared as a force ghost with his mother and made amends to Rey silently. Anakin's force ghost would have appeared with the younger force ghost of Luke and Leia to say goodbye forever. The Resistance gang would have celebrated on Tatooine at the Lars homestead. Finn and Rey watching the sunrise hand in hand with Jaina, Rose, Poe, Zori, Chewie, and the droids. Is the Abrams cut better? It's a more coherent story than the theatrical release, but it's also filled with a lot of Abrams quality writing. If you don't like J.J. Abrams films, this wouldn't make you a fan of Abrams or Nine. Lucasfilm had thought it leaned too heavily on the fan service. Will the Abrams cut ever actually get released? Not sure. Heard some talks about it, but Bob Chapek has had his hands full and is rather cheap. I also don't see a high fan campaign for this ever happening like the Snyder Cut. My final thoughts. Personally, I favored Colin's ending chapter with Duel of the Fates more. In my humble opinion, he got Star Wars the best should have given him the trilogy, but that's just my own personal two cents. There'll be more leaks coming, maybe from me, maybe not. I can't provide much personal info without putting myself at risk. Take this however you want. I'm attempting to get this out for the sake of the truth. May the force be with you. Again, this is all rumor, but there's a lot of interesting things here, and a lot of it actually matches up and could be. With more time, we'll see how much of this is actually true. Let me know in the comments what you guys think about all of these Star Wars leaks. Please like, subscribe, and comment on the video. May the Force be with you. Impressive. The most impressive.